Welcome to this. Welcome to the second video I will be doing about scripting and flying actually in GTA 5. Uh, in this video I'll be actually creating the code I made to fly so I'll, I'll teach you how basically how to mod in GTA 5. I'll, I will only describe the basics. Uh, I expect you to have downloaded and followed the instructions in the last video but instead of the regular files I want you to download the SDK files. Uh, just because I'm not going over that one again because I expect you to know that modding is quite difficult and th those are skills you need to have to be able to mod successfully. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, how do you start make a mod? Well first thing I have to show you is this. In the, in the SDK from script hook you will find a folder called where is it not here in ink you'll see natives just open natives and you'll see lots of pieces of code now what all of these things are these are all functions you can use or natives as they're called so some of them don't have names and uh, we're not quite sure what they do most of them do and they just require variables. So, for example, set player can do drive by, and then two variables of one boolean, so false or true, and another one. We're not quite sure what. You can mess with that, and you should be able to find out what. So, what we want to do is we want to fly, and the easiest way to fly is to look for a variable called the speed. We want to change the speed of a vehicle so that it will, it will fly basically um, I'm quickly looking for it how it's called here set vehicle forward speed it wants an any value and a float value so the float should be float is a number uh, and we that, that will be the speed at which the vehicle will be traveling and any will be uh, an ID which you have to fill in We'll come back to that later. So let's start. So how does any Lua script start in GTA 5? It starts with declaring the name of the entire program. So in our case, we'll call them call fly. You, you equal it to just two brackets like this. Still, I'm not quite sure why we do this, but it's just regular. It's just common to do this in for GTA 5 modding. <laughs> so let's quickly save it to be sure that I'll call it fly.lua. Okay, nice. Okay, there we go. So now we want to make a script which runs all the time. So we'll just make a function, a function of course of fly. Dot, and we can give it a name. So we, the first function we want to create is a function which will increase the speed. And that will use that, that uh, the native which we saw earlier. So let's call it increase. And uh, if you're familiar with Lua, you don't have to do any strange brackets. You just open it and close it like that. So, but we're not going to start with this uh, function. We're going to create another one because this, if you do fly dot tick, so fly is just the name of your uh, your entire program. And tick, if you put tick, that will run constantly, every frame basically. So everything you put in here will run every second or every very quickly actually. So we want to check for things. We want to check if the key is pressed every second. So the keys we want to use get key pressed, and then the key we want to use. So what I'm basically saying is, if a specific key is pressed, I haven't filled it in yet, then do this. So there's also a file in, I'm not quite sure if I can find it, here in the same SDK ink directory, and it's called main. Okay, it's not that one. Let me quickly look for it. In add-ins, nope. Here, this one, this main one. I think it's in the Lua SDK. You get a list. It's also 
more code, but you also get a list of all the names, all the numbers, and the keys associated with these numbers. So for example, if I want to start the code up, I wanted to use F10. I search for F10 and 121. So I'll fill in 121. So if I now press 121, this code will run. Uh, so that's kind of great. So now we're going to the native again. And we wanted to set vehicle forward speed. If we would run this right now, if we, it would crash. And there are two reasons for this. First one, we haven't filled anything in here. There should be at least two variables. Well, no variables, but two inputs. So the float is the speed. We can fill that in already. Uh, let's say 20. The speed is not in miles per hour and also not in kilometers an hour. I'm not quite sure what the units for it is, but you can mess around with it how much you want. So then you go to, again, to natives. And there's a second problem because if you run it right now, it still doesn't work. Why? Because all these natives are part of a group, the group namespace vehicle. So you have to declare that it's part of the namespace vehicle. So how do you do that? Just put vehicle in front of it, like that. So now we need one more, one more input, because otherwise it will not work. Well, I've found out that the input you need is a player pet ID and you can we can look up what it's called we're looking for this one the player pet ID so we just copy it we once again check it's in the namespace player so we'll just make a local variable so that is only usable in this function because we don't need it anywhere else it's a bit but you can make a global function for example by so this uh, global variable, this will be a global variable, if I can type. And you can use that throughout the entire function. But that's not useful because we want to only use it in this one. So we'll remove that. Uh, local player per ID equals that. And then once again, of course, declare the namespace, like that. So now we can fill this in here. So we'll get player for ID. Wait, no, even this will not work because what we're filling in right now, we've now got the player per ID, but what we actually want is the vehicle associated because we have to declare the vehicle we want to speed up. And there's another na native for that once again. And it's very easy. Get vehicle pet is in. So that's why we needed the pet because if you you can also get the normal player I can get player ID I think it's called not quite sure what's called it's on the top of player names get player pet uh, but there's another one but it's not important right now we just want to have get player pet ID so this is not the one we're using we're using pet ID because that's actually what the vehicle wants, as I said before. So, get vehicle pet is in. But now I can't find it because, of course, I'm in the wrong file. Get vehicle where, where, uh, where pet is in. Yeah, that. So just copy it. Make sure. I assume it's. Oh, it's in pet. Okay. So we'll fill in then, we'll make another variable, why not? Player per ID, why not? Doesn't matter. And then player per ID, like that. Now once again, this will once again not work because if, as you can see, get player, you need also a bool. So that's true or false. And it makes no sense to make, make sure to write down false here because we do want it so just true so that's a good statement right here of course you you don't need to use these var variables what you can do is you can literally put this in here that will work as well I oh, forgot to put pet like that and you can do the same here so I'll just clean up the code a bit 
make it look a little bit nicer so we can put this in here it is exactly the same and we you save some space so right now if we press this key then this will happen so it will set the speed to 20 but remember when you press the key this will happen now uh, once you let go of the key the uh, it will reset the speed and you can just speed it up again so we do not want to do this this piece of code is good but we need to find a way so that when you press the button it will keep itself in that state and then once you uh, press the button again you uh, it will once again just reset so how are we going to do this well what we're going to do is make a global variable and we'll call it function oh wait no function just fly dot pressed equals one and put a zero by there so copy that put it down here for later and I will do this so if you press the button the variable fly dot pressed should equal one and then when you put once you press it again you want it to be zero again so what we're gonna do if fly dot pressed equals one then this should equal zero else because it can only be zero or one fly dot fly dot pressed was one. So what happens is basically what you're doing is if this variable has already been reset once it will reset another time and so every time it will do another action. So what you can do now is uh, let me check we have one okay we need that and then like this. So what we now do we have to put in this function fly tick we can say if fly dot pressed equals one then we have to execute this so right now what you're doing is you're basically saying so once you press the key once this value from zero changes to one then once you press the button another time it will check, hey, it's one, so we have to change it back to zero. And that will, of course, loop continuously, so, but all this will only loop when you press that key. And this here checks, okay, normally the value is zero, so this will not run. But if you press it just once, this will run every time. Because only the function tick repeats, not this. So that's what we want. Um, another thing I forgot to tell, that's very important actually, you always have to return the function, the entire program again, just like that. That's all you have to do. So now we have this, it should technically work. But we want to improve it because now the speed will always be 20 and we don't want the speed to be 20. We want it to be changeable with the plus and minus keys. So let's do that. So we'll first create a global variable again, fly speed, and it will be 20. So now we'll change this to fly dot speed. Okay. So let's create two buttons. This is very easy. So get just get key pressed again. Now we want to find the plus button in main.lua. 187. So, I can remove this, we're not going to use it, most likely. So, what we can do now, we can say, so if the key is pressed, then the value of fly.speed should equal fly.speed plus 1. That's all we're going to do. I'll do the same for this one. If get key pressed 187, then fly dot speed should equal fly dot speed minus one like that. I'll end it. 
So right now what we're doing is, this speed is determined by, when you first start to program, this will be the speed always. But, when you press one of these buttons, you'll start increasing the speed, or decreasing, depending on the button. Oh wait, that's the wrong button actually. It should be 187, 189, yeah. Like so. So now, we have a way to decrease the speed, we have a way to increase the speed, and we have a way to activate it. So that's all we need to do. So, this is just a very basic script in Lua. Right now you can just file, save as, fly.lua, it will replace it. And then we go to, let, let me have a look. We'll go to our GTA folder, go to script, add-ins, and just drag it in there, and that will work. So that's it. It's that easy. We've just made a little program in Lua, and this will, will work in GTA. Just drag it in there, press F4 to refresh, and you can make changes while playing GTA, that's no problem. Just press F4 every time you make a re uh, change in your code. It's very useful. So I hope you got I hope I helped you guys with a very basic understanding of modding GTA 5. Right now we cannot change any models, but that will come in the future. I I hope you liked it. Have a good